I think more than a government conspiracy to prove to keep the earth is round, flat earth and anti-vax is a government conspiracy to keep stupid people busy. <laughs> Are recording <laughs> hey, episode uh, seven. Seven. How's it going, man? Not bad, not bad. We have coffee this time. Oh, geez, we had man. it last time, but like uh, this, okay. this seems a bit more like a a conversation uh, around yeah. a coffee table or like it a coffee house. Coffee. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, no, it's been good. It's been good. We had a really, really good time last time with uh, with Alessandro. Yeah, I think it was super interesting. Yeah. Though. It's. Um, I think we're starting to get also the hang of like fixing the audio and uh, yeah. i think that was one of the like the better quality ones except yeah, for like too. the the camera falling yeah but, we'll, um, we'll see what happens today yeah it's more, <laughs> i don't know <laughs> today is going to be just like random freestyling uh yeah so it's going to be it's going to be fun also just to test it so it's cool let me just bring this a little bit further down okay mm -hmm. Yeah, man. I see you're wearing a chef shirt, which uh, yeah, my girlfriend drew, actually. Oh, did she? She drew the back. Everybody likes this shirt a lot. Really? Yeah, yeah. Cool. I keep getting, like, like really good comments about this one. Awesome. Yeah. yeah she should get that. We should do that one again, actually. Yeah, yeah this yeah. one's really cool. Mm. I think I stole it from you as well. No, I think that was uh, my gift to you. Oh, uh, is it? <laughs> yeah, for your last uh, <laughs> birthday present, but no, which I be. didn't get this year. Oh, well, it's okay. I'll get you. I'll get you. No <laughs> Don't no worry stress. about it. <laughs> So, um, talking about the guest that we had on before, Alessandro is kicking us as usual. He's uh, doing a um, an Instagram takeover for a profile I can't remember who it's called now, and shooting as as much as he can. So you guys can check out all his news on Instagram. Claudim has just launched her uh, second sing single. Her second single. Keep myself is, from you. Keep myself from you. It's amazing. It's really really good really good so that's cool uh fede biazzi is um working hard on her new projects for the salon immobile 2019 and that's it that's our guest isn't it yeah i know allegra well allegra she's kicking us as usual and now she's back in los angeles at the moment yeah i saw the photos for cosmopolitan came out yeah they came out the other day and um so that's still in the newsstands and if you're in italy you pick him up um, it's. I'm quite happy with that story. It's awesome. quite cool. That was. Uh, I think it was one of your best ones, actually. Yeah. For yeah, for that kind of stuff, it's quite mm. nice. I think it was. I mean, there was a real connection with me and her. I think we had a lot of fun. I think you could tell also by the way that the chat went on uh, the evening afterwards. So I think that um, yeah, it was a good um, day just generally. Awesome. Cool. It's fun. That's it. What's new in your life? Um, we we just won a, an award for our Takuya documentary, or right. well, documentary short film, mm -hmm. at the Mimpi Film Festival in Brazil. Sick. And uh, we won best script, best uh, scenography, scenography. What is script. in English? Script. Screenwriting. Screen screenplay. Screen screenplay. Best screenplay um, for a short film. So. Okay. Great That's news. Brilliant. Excellent. Yeah. So that'll be coming very soon. Like the trophy, they, they sent me an email today. So we should be getting the trophy in the post. In the post. In pieces. Yeah, probably. With the Italian <laughs> post office. Have you seen any pictures of the, of the trophy yet? No, I have no you idea. I didn't, what, you have no idea what it's like. Yeah, I have no idea. I didn't know that we were, we were going to get one. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's just like, oh, it's all, it's it's cool. all good. So now we're getting, um, we're pretty much like 90% finished with all the editing of mm -hmm. the iTunes version, which we've already spoken about. But, um, uh, we've been getting that all put together and um, mm. yeah I managed to get some um, we had the whole musical music score re redone right and from this one guy called Car Carlo Valsesio I hope I'm saying his name right this really like uh, cool little music producer mm -hmm. he did the whole score and then we had um, Eza aka El Prez which is a <laughs> um, OG hip hop uh, artist from from I think he's from Livorno, mm -hmm. but he's he's based in Milan. He's always like doing all sorts of stuff. And he gave us some music. I oh, sick. So awesome. we got like a whole lot of. So it's uh, going to be all original score. Exactly. Yeah. Fantastic. So that'll yeah. be good. It'll be and out. That'll be out. I'm hoping by the end of the year. So okay. Cool. I'll so keep you shortly. I'll keep everyone posted. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. And so that's it. Mm -hmm. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> that's been the update of yeah. uh, the Arcade Studio podcast. Yeah. I don't know. But um, yeah, it's just been a pretty crazy year, just mm, in general. Yeah, just uh, it has been quite crazy, you know. 
just like so work. much stuff and then uh yeah. you know i mean i have so many pro- projects that i want to do Mm-mm. i was about to say problems but i think that's that comes that's with the it. same thing but um we we have a, our 10 year anniversary we just had it in november for chef mm-hmm. so we're working on uh, doing some content for that and uh, we wanted to do a book in um originally yeah. but um it's just way you know we're basically doing a full-time job part-time with yeah. The chef. yeah yeah for sure so that's not um it, it, we haven't been able to go ahead with that so we've been we have to we, we have like a two or three video parts that we're going to drop in the next couple of months okay so yeah the new york one has come out already yeah the new york one came out it's been uh yeah people are watching it we got some some guys from new york uh contacting us they're like yeah we might come to milan and skate and stuff awesome which is really cool and then um yeah just on to the next one yeah we got some stuff in in the works fantastic yeah. yeah same here it's just like i thought i'd get a lot more done this year just you know it's it's like every year you know you think you get to the end you get to december it's like oh hang on a second what's happened where's the year gone so now it's just about um getting to christmas and getting that you know getting, getting through that unscathed and then January starting off again nice and fresh but I think I've got, I might have a job in South Africa in January so you're getting away from the winter at least maybe for a couple of days it won't be a long one um, and then uh, that's it for the moment I've got like a couple of extra little jobs here and there and but for me at the moment the, the thing that's giving me the most fun is this thing this the, yeah me too I've been like um, uh, just been watching a lot of well, not watching I've been listening to a lot of podcasts like while we've been doing this and then i've been really listening to these ones just to yeah, see what we can do mistakes, better yeah. like you know try i just said like again i'm trying to stop doing that i'm just trying to mm-hmm. you know be a little bit more fluent and a little bit more articulate yeah, yeah, yeah. and then um i've been listening to some italian podcast just to see what what's up with like the scene, the scene yeah mm-hmm. yeah and uh i just find that italy is just in general quite far behind still on the whole idea of listening to something for an hour yeah. or more it's just hasn't come into the, the the imagination of it yet so um it might take a little bit longer people are starting to come around a little bit but i still get like lots of mates are like why why do you do it so long it's like it's too long <laughs> yeah, how do you get like you know like i've been saying to our guests as well you know mm-hmm. it's about you take about 10 to 15 minutes to get into it yeah because yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you don't know what are you doing you know what are we going to talk about exactly and how and, are we going to talk about it and you're also as much as we know the people that are on the other side you're still a little bit guarded as to like how much you're going to say what you're going to say what i'm going to ask what how you're going to respond to it mm. so i think it's normal that everybody that, that the first 10 15 minutes of the podcast are always a little bit more stilted like with alessandra i think at the end the last half an hour the last 45 minutes was like super smooth it was super nice the conversation got quite interesting and the first maybe 45 minutes was a little bit more like a bit of sparring a bit of just like just uh, seeing what see, it is exactly seeing how much yeah. uh, can be said and how much can't be said but yeah but i think you know i think it's so good to be able to spend time on something like if you need to get if you want to find out really what somebody's thinking you can't just be like so what you're thinking and he's like oh not really not much because yeah, normally when people do that and um, especially on, on news uh, shows yeah or interview f- shows you normally prepped before what you're going to talk yeah, about that too that too so you kind of know what you're going to reply and yeah and the replies are always staged yeah a little bit you know you you have to yeah of course because otherwise you have you know you have very few minutes to get your point across Mm -hmm. and maybe it gets uh, you may seem even like a little bit aggressive sometimes or a little bit you know um detached so yeah you're recording yeah yeah i always (laughs) i always have to check out yeah yeah. like my eyes always just drop off to the screen to just make sure everything's going smoothly Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. no but that's that's a nice thing about these conversations is that um all the baggage that we come in with is what we've managed to look about, you know, up about the guest in the, or the day before, or the couple of days before when mm-hmm. we finally know who's going to be on, because we never know really up until a couple of days before, if we're actually going to do something. Of course. Yeah, because, we, you know, it's jobs and family and whatnot. So yeah. um, you pop in and you know, you've got 
this guy and he's a photographer and this is what he does and this when she's a designer and this is what she does and you look it up and you just plan it on that and if you have a personal relationship with the person um, you manage to you, you come with that knowledge but we never like say okay this is what we're gonna like really concentrate on unless there's somebody that the guest particularly wants to speak about then maybe yeah of course I mean you know in the end I think it's uh, it's also pretty cool that you can have on maybe an actor or whatever or just want someone who does video editing and you end up talking about you know just you know the yeah. the background you know yeah or just yeah, like yeah. talking about anything which is it's a little bit more natural and also when you re listen to it it's a little bit more natural and and, and fluid i hope at least i don't yeah. know that's the way i see it H- have you watched um hot ones no. it's that uh, uh the, the, the interview show on youtube um, oh, with the the, the chicken with wings, the chicken wings, the buffalo wings. Yeah, 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 yeah I saw yeah. a couple of. You saw I, the Bill Burr I one. I just watched the Bill Burr one today. Yeah. That was hilarious. I haven't seen that one yet. That guy's a genius. Yeah, he is. His um, he was one of the first podcasts I, I started listening to. I think he was one of the first. He was before Rogan, before all those guys. He, uh, I yeah, don't know. yeah. He, he just didn't become famous. Like his podcast mm-hmm. isn't famous, but he was on like I think it's called Monday Morning or something like that. Yeah, he has the Monday Morning and the Thursday Morning one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think he was on like, like I mean he he says it in in the in the Hot Wings Challenge thing. The yeah, he started early and then everybody else just overtook him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they probably just had like yeah. more time because he's been doing a lot of stand up. Yeah, he's always, he's always been on the road. He's one and of stuff. the best, I think. But like, I saw a good one with um because. I first got into long form like radio conversation type stuff through the Open Anthony yeah, yeah, show yeah. like way back and it was all on YouTube and yeah, yeah, yeah. you know I was listening to episodes or I don't even know if you could call them episodes but you know um, feeds that were already three or four years old like mm-hmm. I was listening to them in about maybe 08, 07 yeah, and they yeah, were yeah. from like 2002 you know and I started like really enjoying just this random yep. really like hardcore kind of uh conversation just between guys and they would have like guests on and stuff and then i started meeting like you know, finding out about all these really cool stand-up comedians like Pat- mm-hmm. patrice o'neill bill burr like all these guys <clears throat> and then um and then from there I just started like bumping into all these new podcasts like the joe rogan one and uh, Radio Lab and all these Radio Lab is excellent. Radio Lab is incredible. Mm-mm-mm. You can only learn from them. Yeah, and from the content to how they produce the things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's insane. Uh, it, uh, uh, have you figured out how they do it? They they just like ask the same question to like various people. It depends on what they're doing. Like I know that um, I really like the way they've done old timey type of radio like mm. storytelling radio yeah in yeah. a new in a new way because they always keep the the sound effects and like the ambient sound underneath yeah. and they they describe what's happening so then we went to his house and you know and um but it's cool because it seems like i don't know the names of the guests of, mm. of the hosts but it seems like one the older guy is always the guy who's having the story told to him yeah and yeah, the yeah, young yeah. guy is bringing him the story he's like hey old dude yeah this is what's happening and and you just gotta then tell me what you think about this stuff and usually he's quite skeptical and he's always a bit like what is it what's yeah it? yeah <laughs> it's, it's super like, cool there's a really good um, chemistry with them and then i just love how they they edit it that like one person starts talking and then uh, the story flips into the next person who's talking about the same thing but he just sort of picks up the same sentence yeah, yeah. it's it's just so intelligent how it's done it's really really good that's like real that's production like, like audio production but that's um like people doing it they've been doing it radio for a million years yeah people. that is a classic like classic radio done in a in a new media type way yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. there's just a, a lot of storytelling behind it, it I think each episode takes at least a month yeah. to do. I that. need to turn you onto this um, one that called, it's called the um, Chatty Catties. There are three um, models that I've worked with. Well, two of them I've worked with. One I haven't had the pleasure yet, but they're all called uh, Catherine or Katie <laughs> or um, whatever derivation of Kathy that could Kate. be. <laughs> I don't know. And uh, they're yeah, so it's Chatty Catties, and it's really hilarious. They're just like three. There's one. There's a British girl and an aussie and an american 
Sounds like a joke. It sounds like a joke. And they walk into a bar. <laughs> they and walk then, into a studio. And, and they, then they, talk, they tell the story. And it's like sometimes there are ones in Australia, the other ones in the States, and the other ones in Shanghai. And they, they sort of link up and they... And then, oh, they do it on, yeah, on, like, they, online? On Skype or whatever it is that they wow. use. No, no, it's really good. And it's like, it's just funny. They just tell some hilarious stories that it's like really worth listening to. Cool, I'm going to check it out. It's just like, um, it's really random. I mean, it's, it's like what we do pretty much, but without the um, pseudo intellectual like uh, <laughs> undertone that we try and, you know, just figure out what guests are thinking about and whatnot. Um, they it's just three of them and just talking shit. It's like a girl's like slumber party sort of thing. Which is what you... It's so much fun. Yeah, it's awesome. It's really good. It's pretty much what yeah. you would like to, you'd like to be the fly in the wall yeah, of yeah, those yeah. things, you know? Exactly. Like, okay, well, how do they... How do three women who get together actually act? Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. what do they talk about? And you know, that I've always like liked that. It's a more natural way of storytelling because when yeah, someone yeah. is uh, is fascinating, uh, either in a funny way or uh, in an intellectual pseudo intellectual way or just in a weird way, you're going to be captivated mm -hmm. by what they're talking about, even if it's like just randomness. And then, um, I can't remember her name. The the um, the actress who did a scary movie. Ferris, Anna Ferris. Yeah, yeah she has yeah. a really good one with Kevin Smith, like really? as a guest on. Okay, and that's cool. pretty cool. Like uh, the way she, she's just like really raw. Mm -hmm. and I, I wasn't, I didn't expect it. I was like, oh wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there are so many. There's yeah. Tom Segura's your mom's house with uh, with his wife, Christina P. Hilarious. It's just, but that's just R-rated. Just like stupid, like dirty. Just like you need that sometimes. Really good. Well, they, I don't know. There's just too many to, yeah. to mention them all. But, but just like been been discovering them even more mm -hmm. lately, you know, just to kind of figure out as well what kind of um, I don't know, like what kind of sector are, are we in, you know, just to kind of wrap my head around it. Because like you know, okay, everyone does pretty much long form. And yeah, what and kind I, of I think we're in a weird place because we don't we haven't. We don't want to have just like photographers or just mm. video makers. So it's like we, we're not in one of those realms. And what I would like to do is have engineers and, you know, like all sorts of people, not just, you know, even the, the guy that makes the Panzerotti down the road. Yeah, because I would you like know? to learn also from the guests that I'm, I'm talking yeah, yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. So I think it would be cool to like, for it to just be about people talking to people. Mm. Uh, and figuring out what other people do for, and how they get to the same conclusions or different conclusions and how they get through life. I mean, I find it really interesting always to just figure out how people are dealing with the same problems that we have or, mm. you know, whatever. And so that's quite cool. And bo, bo, that's something you shouldn't say in... Uh, in English. In English or in a podcast uh, or on radio. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Bo is the, the last time we had the the one on one thing. You said that you wrote a uh, a whole comedy sketch, a stand up comedy. Stand up comedy. Yeah. Am I going to have to like burn my no, no, jokes? No. I don't want you to burn your jokes, but I was thinking, do you do you would, would you like to try and get it into an open mic or something like? That? I've I've been tempted. Uh, I've been tempted. I think this is kind of my first step into just like talking because you know. We, with my job, like when I'm doing like scripts and stuff for promos, you would then get the audio back from the, mm -hmm. the speaker and you would just, you know, from, I used to work on Nickelodeon and then you would have like, I met the guy and his voice was totally different and he had like oh, a whole right. way of, of, of talking on the mic, which was just interesting. And it's like, mm -hmm. you know, that, that's pretty cool. I, I wonder how you do that. And then with the, um, with the MTV speaker, I was like, you know, I think I can kind of like ins get that. inspired from him and, and, and do something. And so I started doing my own uh, voiceover guides for my promos. Right. So you can actually get the, um, the timing right and stuff. And after a while, when you listen to your own voice and it sounds shitty and doesn't have the same kind of uh, effect you want to have on the markup, I was like, okay, dude. Just like I was really embarrassed to do them all the time. I would like close myself behind the door mm. and you know, just like if I heard someone some footsteps, I'd be okay and I'd stop stop recording and restart again. And then one day I was just like, fuck it. I'm gonna do I'm just gonna like go all in and try and change my voice. And something cool kinda came out. And then I just kept on doing that. And I was like, I actually kinda like doing the voiceovers. And then 
I started doing, I did a voiceover for a documentary I did on uh, Milano Centrale. That was the first mm-hmm. time I did it. And people were, they didn't even know it was me right. at the beginning. So I was like, okay, this maybe, they didn't say anything bad about it. They're like, oh, who's the guy doing the, the voice? And then, um, I, you know, I just kept on doing them for, for my work. And then I got a couple of jobs like in the last year of doing voiceovers for, for a friend of mine. Okay. Did three voiceovers, I think. Got paid as well. So I was awesome. like, oh, with my, my, the mic, which is not here. The, the blue mic is mine. And it just started, you know, doing that. So that's kind of like my stepping in. Because I, like, like I said in Cloudium's one, Mm-mm. that I've always kind of saw myself on a stage, but I never yeah, had yeah, the yeah, actual exactly. self, um, I don't know, like self not only self-awareness, but also like self-control and mm-hmm. self-confidence to actually throw myself in that. I've always had that, mm-hmm. like, you know, just lip singing uh, by myself in when I was like eight yeah. to like fucking Freddie Mercury, ACDC, any like CDs I had. And then, um, I don't know, I just, I just really, I've always loved stand-up comedy yeah, yeah. and I've always loved Dave Chappelle. I've always loved uh, um, Chris Rock, like all these guys, uh, especially the newer stuff that um, Dave Shabazz done. The, the, the last two. Um, the last two are incredible. Netflix, especially the second one in the small room. Where he's sitting down. Brilliant. Yeah. And uh, just like. Goosebumps. Yeah. It's like goosebumps and it's comedy and like it's making you think. I'm like, okay, wow. Yeah, and, it's, <laughs> it's and I've always loved the idea of doing that. Mm-mm-mm. And they've had it. They have open mic nights um, in Milan. I oh, do they? They have them. And they have them in in Viacom as well. They have really? um, Comedy Central does them. Okay, but in Italian. In- I think you can. They do it in Italian, but I think you can actually find an English open mic night. But I don't know if I would actually do that. I'd, I've like written some stuff. I don't know if it's funny or not. Maybe you need to do it in a different city. Maybe you need to go to like London or something when you don't know Maybe. anybody. Maybe I don't do know. It. I've actually just got to put like together a set. Yeah, you need like and, five minutes. Yeah. But even, I don't know how long an open mic is, but I think it's five minutes or something. Yeah, it's like yeah. five to seven minutes, I think. Yeah, you just yeah, stand yeah. up there and just like... get Blurt out your stuff. Yeah, get shat on and have no one laugh at you. Just get used <laughs> to that. And okay, go back to the drawing board and just try and do that. Because like some things seem funny to me. <laughs> and I can make like... Because to me, one of the, be- the best thing ever is laughing. Yeah. It, yeah. Like better than sex, better than skateboarding, better than anything is laughing because mm-hmm. it just fe- feels so good. The second best thing is making people laugh, mm-hmm. like having that control to it. You know, I, I said something, even if I wasn't meaning it and someone yeah. is uncontrollably laughing. It's, it's brilliant. It no? doesn't happen often. Yeah. And also yeah. when people are laughing, they're completely debilitated. You know, it's, a, it's, a, it's a superpower almost. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's amazing. You, you have real control over that person. And sometimes you just have to, you know risk offending people and you have to risk not being funny yeah, yeah, yeah. and um how many times I, all the time i always <laughs> get a cold sweat yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Like, oh, shit. Like, oh shit oh okay. shit and then maybe when you think something's really funny and nobody heard it the first time and it's like you say it the second time and it was really pretty offensive the first time <laughs> and they all heard it <laughs> and they didn't hear it but the, the second time you said it you say it a little bit louder a little bit with more emphasis and it gets through and you're like, oh, I should have just kept quiet after the first one. Yeah, but you want to get it out. It's like the internal yeah, it's battle. Like, Come on, I've got, I've got. This is this is really good mm. in my head. Have you been following the Dolce Gabbana um, debacle? No, I heard about it. Okay, so do you want to? Shall we talk about this? Because this yeah, is, I have the, no the, idea. This what... is going directly. It, it's about funniness in my in my head. This thing. Okay, so you I'll have run, to give me I'll, a background. I'll run through the background. Basically, what happened was um, Dolce Gabbana uh, was doing this massive fashion show in uh, China. And they did these three um, ads. I don't know if it was just Instagram or whatever, but it was like three spots where there was a Chinese girl dressed up Dolce Gabbana style, so super mm. like um, cliched. But you know, Dolce Gabbana is cliched. It's, that's what they do. It's like they have the Southern Italian sort of cliche with the black lace and the little old oh, lady, well, yeah, 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 you know that kind of stuff. Yeah. So it's like they, they've always played on cliche, and it's fine. Because they had the one campaign with like the Italian family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do that. And then they have like, the, especially recently, in the last couple of years, it's all about like Italy, 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 South Italy, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Italian family or the old ladies, whatever, at the marketplace. If they're not, you know, what, so it's like that. So they applied their logic to the Chinese market. And then they had this girl eating pizza and then eating uh, 
spaghetti and eating a cannolo siciliano. Yeah? And there was a voiceover talking, or the Chinese voiceover, and this chick was struggling with the chopsticks to eat it. Okay. And then at the end of the day, the joke was sort of like, oh, well, you know, you, we can't all be Italian, but, uh, you know, with the chopsticks, you can, you know, whatever. It, it, it's cool to eat food with chopsticks or something like that. They were flat. I mean, for me, like I looked at it, they were beautifully shot, they were beautifully directed, whatever. But like the concept was pretty the concept flat. was flat because okay. why shouldn't a Chinese woman be able to eat spaghetti with a chopstick? I get you know because they already eat. It, it, they sort of invented them. They eat them. soy pasta with the yeah, chopsticks, exactly, which is impossible. Exactly, and nobody eats pizza with chopsticks or with knives and forks unless you're an animal. No, or me. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, and you're well, not pasta. I mean, I eat sometimes the pizza. I don't want to get my my hand if it's a really sloppy pizza. Yeah, I don't well, like. it could be, but anyway, it doesn't. Whatever, I mean, you're an animal. It's fine. Yeah. And a cannola is so similar to a um, uh, involtino, involtino, like uh, a um, spring roll. Spring roll. So, like for me. There was a non a non sequitur, like non sequitur. It shouldn't be <laughs> so hard for this chick to be able to eat, even if it was like a massive canola. Why be? They got something like 127 million negative comments. Ooh. Okay, about this. That's more than young signorino. <laughs> it's like it's like tenth of China shitting on them, like from a dizzy height. Okay. Then what happened? Like because they were offended. Um, maybe they're a bit thin-skinned, but whatever. This all comes out. A journalist writes to Stefano Gabbana, and they they have a bit of a spat on uh, uh, direct messages on Instagram. This chick, private, private, privately. This chick screenshots, puts it on, and he wrote something like, oh, they're just a bunch of animals that eat dogs anyway, so what do I care? Something like that. I'm paraphrasing. It's not exactly what he wrote, but it's more or less the gist. And so massive shit hits the fan. They had to cancel the, um, the massive fashion show that they had over there where they had top hair stylists, top models, top everything. So mm. they, I think they... They, they, like, they were like relaunching a whole I mean, they were just like... They, they were doing a big show like to show like China how much, you know, you're important to us sort of thing. Like mm. look at our stuff. Whoops. So canceled everything and and everybody goes home. And then they did the, that... Um, uh, the apologies video oh, yeah. where they're sitting there like they're being um, arrested by ISIS. <laughs> arrested by ISIS. <laughs> Kidnapped by ISIS. <laughs> and um, and it, the, the, the line goes something like, we want to say sorry to the Chinese because there are lots of them. You know, something like that. Oh, wow. Not because we did something wrong, but because there are so many. Did they them. say that? Yes, they did. Oh, I mean, wow. It was obviously <laughs> like, I don't know. There was just a big... Uh, one fuck up after the the next, and I, I don't know. Somebody got fired for sure. Oh, definitely, big time. Anyway, <laughs> back to the first point. The whole problem is there, in my opinion, is that first of all they didn't call like a Chinese person into the meeting to double check the and just be like, dude, is this funny? Will this work in China? You mm -hmm. know. That's like the, the first step anyone would do, basically. Yeah, it's like, I mean, you got to... At, at the, least two At the people. end of the day, you're trying to sell them something. Mm. That's what you want to do. You, you want, you're like, please give me your money. So the last thing you want to do is just it's insult them gratuitously. But they obviously didn't... They, they thought it funny. Most of the people I speak to don't find them offensive, but they're not... Most of the people I speak to aren't Chinese. So I don't yeah, know. Yeah, so you can't really... Yeah, but no, you know, exactly what's going I can't be. judge what other people are going to find funny. I mean, I can say, oh, this you is funny. Try, I can try. I can try. Were they funny. trying to be funny or was it just like trying to be... I think they were trying to be funny. I think they were trying to be like a little bit ironic and a little bit, you know, ha, 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 mm. look at this. And I think that's the idea. But... I have to see it now. Oh, you have to see it. At the end of the day, the issue is if you're not funny, don't stay away from comedy. Mm. Because if you, you need to be funny, you need to have that timing it's all about timing it's all about you can even offend people but if you offend them with like that right joke and the right point then the offense is going to fly over their heads and then of course you can't insult them in direct messages and whatever that journalist did with direct messages afterwards that's a whole different yeah yeah that's discussion like because integrity or whatever but that's just like a whole yeah because for me like if, if i was a journalist and i did something like that was it a, i heard it was an influencer an though. influencer yeah okay. whatever but she an influencer in my head is sort of like a you know in the same Blogging, realm as yeah. journalism like if i tell you something even if i'm insulting you in private you can say i'm insulting you 
but our conversations should be remain private unless yeah um, i mean that's a big uh, deal right unless now. somebody yeah. else is getting hurt by it i don't know you know bull. i mean yeah, like, yeah. but how many people get like i mean realistically how many people get offended in private messages around the world it's like one every second yeah exactly you know? but and a lot of the time it is you know based on just saying a really shocking thing just for yeah, effect exactly and if that gets taken out of context and then i'm talking to you and i can i might talk to you in one way and then mm. i'll talk to somebody else in another way um uh, it's not because i'm being you know, i'm just trying to be funny or i'm trying to be shocking or whatever it's not because i'm not uh, there's no integrity but maybe the way I'll speak to my mother is different to how I speak to you. Of course. No, it's just you change the yeah. tone of voice depending on the person. And you're trusting and then, the person not to spam your yeah, your dirty laundry everywhere. Exactly, exactly. I think I think that was a little bit weird. Like I wouldn't have maybe done that. But maybe that person is looking for yeah, fame as well. Exactly, exactly. You know? She definitely had like a massive influx of fame and and everything. But is that, whistleblowers? But at the end of the day, are you? Is anybody going to trust her with any information ever again? She's probably going to meet up with Snowden. Yeah, exactly. In, in Moscow. <laughs> it's like it's the two of them sitting behind the coffee table. In Definitely the not dressed Dolce & Gabbana. <laughs> Can you imagine? But anyway, like that's a different story. But the funny thing, just going back to that, is like if you're going to make anything funny, you got to give it to somebody who knows how to make them funny. Of course. Funny. Or at least, I mean, I'm sure they gave it to some creative or someone to do the it script or the concept in the i don't think they did it themselves no, no, of course but they had final like say for sure like it would definitely went out. they probably had never had anyone tell them that they weren't funny yeah that's sure. that's a big thing because i like a lot of people yeah, yeah. never get told that they suck or yeah, yeah or that they shouldn't do something maybe because then it's not the best or maybe there was somebody who said well the guys this probably isn't going to work that well or yeah, maybe some, just someone like, on, in the Dodge Cabana Hong Kong office going, sorry guys, but uh, I just saw the first mock-up. Uh, mm, <laughs> bit sketchy. Mm, I changed the voiceover. <laughs> yeah. Apparently the voiceover was really condescending, even if it was in Chinese, like the way. Because then they have tone. Yeah. Like yeah. they have, I think like, I'm probably speaking out my ass, but I mean, I think they have four different kinds of tones yeah. for every like sound or every word. So, I mean, and depending on how you, like, what tone you use, it's in English as well, but I mean, it's even more difficult there. Yeah. yeah. And if you mess up the tone, imagine just like someone, you know, with a, maybe with a, a translator going there to follow the, the voiceover <laughs> session. And so you're like, fun. yeah, I like that tone, but uh, that tone is very, <laughs> it's very angry. Okay. <laughs> oh, we like it. That's the best take. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Let's put know. that online. That's Boom. such a... Anyway, so that, that, went, that, that went like pear shaped. And then the other thing I was thinking about, but this is going to be a bit boring, but anyway, if you, you blow the whistle on Dodge Cabana, okay, fine. End of the day, that company is giving so much work to so many people in China, in Italy, in America, wherever, all over the world. Mm. Like, they, they, I think there's something like 150 million euros or something like that mm. a year so like something silly and it would have been an even bigger market now. Yeah, yeah yeah, it was a massive market i mean of course they were getting rich and whatever but they're also contributing they they sometimes pay taxes because dodge cabana also quite famous for having dodge taxes mm. but when they do pay taxes they pay taxes and that money gets filtered back into the italian system and that gets used for whatever you know so if you go and blow the whistle on these guys fine it was probably you know it was totally reprehensible and whatever but you have to weigh that out you have to weigh it all out you know it's like uh, is it as bad as that at the end of the day mm. it'll come out sooner or later is it as bad guys. as a hundred thousand jobs getting taken away maybe yeah maybe or whatever it is you know for like so a what, shitty what joke i'm saying is that is it <laughs> don't go on <laughs> stage more, more than more than the shitty joke it's it's about what he said because that that was a real problem yeah well so that is like, pretty heavy disrespecting that's a, that was a real issue but anyway i don't know we'll see, well, yeah, see um, how that goes out i mean i'm sure they're going to be okay <laughs> they did the apology i mean that's like once you do that you're the technically safe the apology got so much flack it's not even funny. i saw some uh some crazy memes yeah, as well. yeah, yeah. It was hilarious. and that's another thing like right now anything you do memes. as soon as it gets like a little bit of a um, a little bit of traction and starts mm -hmm. you get memed straight away like yep. crazy and i think that's gonna that's how you know you've made it did you in one way or another <laughs> did you ever see that those like article 13 or um things 
like YouTube is doing a lot of these um, Instagram sponsored posts about mm-hmm. uh, Articolo 13. The, the, one, the one about the... Um, the European Union, like... Um, censorship, well, censorship. censorship uh, yeah. Controlling of, of the... Internet. Copyright. It's copyright. more copyright. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how like it, that can affect Europe in general. And mm-hmm. they were talking about memes as well, that anything that's considered like um, copyright infringement could be taken away and blocked. And that mm-hmm. means... You know, memes, memes uh, parodies, satire, anything. Yeah, I don't know. I With wonder. anything, I think it's a little bit exaggerated. Probably, I think yeah. they, they they just defending their side of the thing uh, as much as possible, so that at the end of the day, when legislation does finally come through, it's going to be somewhere in the middle, mm. rather than all the way down the one side. Mm. Like, I don't think uh, it's in anybody's best interest to like go like full board on the on censorship of uh or, or on, on copyright def- defense infringement but I, was th- I was thinking it's kind of um a strategy mm. that they're using because you know they did they they started blocking a whole lot of people on youtube yeah, yeah, like alex yeah. jones and stuff like that yeah. and i was thinking maybe this is a kind of way to show look we we take care of all content and we yeah, want yeah, people we to... Yeah, we really want you to be able to say what you want to yeah. say. Mm-mm-mm. I was just thinking maybe yeah. it could be... It could be, I don't know. That's just like interesting. YouTube, please be nice to us. We, yeah. We've only just started. We have nothing... It's all original content. Uh, it is, of course it is. But and still. we do not approve what Dolce Gabbana said about the Chinese. <laughs> we just did a whole piece on that. Yeah. Oh my God, that was hilarious. Though. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, I'm okay. I'm not going to go on stage then. <laughs> no, but you should do that. You should no. go for it. Sooner or later. I've got great jokes. I have a Hitler joke. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> I have a long corridor in the office joke. I got a whole lot of stuff. Well, we can we can start doing uh, Reno sketches. Mm. We'll do it in an open mic. Yeah. I can just give you like a basic context context of everything. And then we can fill it in. Yeah. So it's like the Hitler thing is the whole gist of the joke is: Would you ever take good advice from a shitty person? So if like yes. someone, like a lot of people wouldn't maybe. I would so definitely if like, take good advice from a shitty person. Yeah, well, I mean, you, it, you're you though. I it, mean, like if you have a mole on your back and like, uh, I don't know, yeah. you are one of the guys and ready to get gassed or whatever. Mm. And uh, Hitler says, you know, during his rant, he's like, yeah, you should check that mole out. <laughs> Yeah, and like, he's like, yeah, you know, I checked, thanks, out, I checked it out, yeah, and it's thanks. actually, I'll, <laughs> I'll have it checked out. It's great. Oh, it's cancer. Okay, cool. But I'm getting yeah. gas anyway, so it's right. And then he just keeps on going on. Yeah. Well, that gives you a good, like, a uh, good. I think like, that one's gonna work really well. <laughs> <laughs> After the Chinese one, <laughs> and then another one is like the clo- like the long corridor in the office, like when you see people like a, lo- a long way away, end. and yeah. you do like the kind of nod. Yeah. Like yeah. hey. Yeah. Oh, fuck, that's and then like you get closer and closer, and you keep your eye like eye contact yeah. and then as soon as you get like maybe a meter away your eyes like yeah. drop off and like you just like don't even acknowledge, acknowledge the person other. exists <laughs> and you don't know what happens behind you like the word like explosions could be happening you're not going to turn around and like look at the back look behind you and like that's past it's past done it's like random shit what like do you that. Do in that situation like i never figured that out that's what, what the long the, corridor one yeah because that, that's, the one death of the, walk. that's one of those things that creates real problems real angst in my life is like when i when i see somebody i know far away on a sidewalk and we're walking towards each other and it feels like one of those cheesy movie clubs where you're like sort of like walking in slow motion in slow motion walking towards each other it's like oh this is gonna be nice the anticipation is building and the anxiety at the same time it's like okay so what are we gonna say um i haven't seen this person for like however long uh, but it even I, happens with people you know yeah, yeah. like uh, you know like um on a regular basis mm-hmm. but I, I i see a lot of people that i don't know a lot of the times so during yeah. the day so i'm like I, I know physically i know who they are yeah. i might not maybe remember their name or maybe I remember the name, but I don't have any like confidence with them. Yeah, uh, so I'm like, uh, and it depends on the person. Like sometimes I have a little bit of um, of a friendliness with them. So mm, 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 mm. sometimes I go with a real douchey like high five, and they all love that because <laughs> like no one really like um, yeah, no one really t- interacts yeah, in those situations. Like, so I'm like touching. from nothing, just like like give them a high five, and some of them like get really hyped and like oh awesome. Mm. And then, like, the whole gun duel, like, this like, little acknowledgement of a, of a uh-huh. gun duel. And that's always really douchey. <laughs> but it's cool. But I mean, then, it's, like, takes- it's so long, that corridor. <laughs> it's super long. And it's just, like, you see them in a the distance, like... Oh. Uh, no. yeah. 
Yeah, so I mean, so no, I'd like to do that. Who are your favorite comics at the moment? Like of the people like, that are currently, well, Dave Chappelle. Well, yeah, Dave Chappelle is one I've had on, uh, watch it on repeat. Mm-mm-mm. Like listen, watch it on repeat, and just I love the way he delivers. I love the 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 topics. Um, he's just like the the masterful. Yeah, he's the best. Like the master. So it's like it's like saying you know we we've had that the whole superhero conversation. Like who's the best? Everyone either says Batman or Superman or mm-hmm. you know the normal ones. So Dave Chappelle definitely. My one of my personal favorites is Patrice O'Neill, the late mm. Pat- Patrice O'Neill, which is yeah, like awesome. You know, philosophy in comedy in comedy terms, just supernatural and you know his all the specials are different it's not you know rehashed which is you know really difficult to do yeah. so it's just like and he did a lot of appearances on the ona open anthony show which i you know if you look for black philip or patrice o'neill is a black philip was like a show he did to help guys in relationships okay and it's really like heavy stuff and some of the stuff kind of works if you actually put it into practice <laughs> Okay, but cool. it's like not only in relationships, it's also in just like not yeah. like you know well, partner. He, he was one of the guys that were on the green room that show. Well, yeah, that he was killing it all the time. Yeah, yeah. What's the guy's name? Uh, with the P. Fuck. Like the host here is like the, yeah, it looks yeah, like yeah, a De Niro kind of Mark something. No, uh, uh. like Paul Provenza. Paul Provenza. Provenza. Yeah, yeah, Provenza. yeah a, and so he was a good one. Funny. Then Bill Burr. Is another great one. Um, I don't know. There's so many, so many, so many good ones, and I, I just think I've had those on repeat, and the, then I had South that, Park um, episodes on Korean repeat. Korean one, Ellie Wong. I haven't seen her stuff. Dude, I saw like a couple of things. She is hilarious. She's the only comic that Martha can listen to. My wife. She's really like, yeah yeah. She she's she's seen the two because she talks about childbirth and how to be a mom mm. and especially how to be the drag. I think it's, the thing is dragon mother, and it's like you know she grew up in a hectic like Oriental kind of family and whatnot. So she was like so much pressure on her shoulders to like compete and be the best at everything what whatever. And so now like <laughs> she's she just talks about all that stuff and. And uh, I think she can really relate to her. I think I can really relate mm. to her. So that's the only one that she's able to... She actually watched the whole... I think her her latest special, she watched the whole thing through. And I was just like sitting there watching her, watching the show. That's because, trippy. Yeah, because I've never seen her watch a stand-up, especially in English. And I was like... And she's like, oh, this is actually quite good. I'm like, yeah, it is. But you should watch the other ones as well because mm. they're amazing. They have to get into it. Yeah. Because stand-up is definitely not an Italian thing. No. Like we have uh, no, no, no. cabaret. Yeah, but there are some good. Like, uh, um, we have Crozza. Crozza is when he does his monologue, he's hilarious. Mm. Or but it's very theatrical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's theatrical. It's always and he needs gimmicks and he needs things. But that's why I say, like his his monologue. If he turned his monologue into an hour, it would be hilarious because he knows he's mm. very good at um, seeing things and like. You know, also Enrico Brignano is Enrico really good. Enrico Brignano as well, also with the monologue. Mm. But it's they, they, where they fall down, in my opinion, is when they start doing their little sketches of personalities and yeah. it's like satire and whatever. And it always has to be hyper political. You can't ever be just like, oh, mm. I was walking down the street and long corridor, blah blah blah. You mm. know, it's always like hyper political because yeah. otherwise they don't go on TV. It's how it is, yeah, of know? course, of yeah. course. But also just the way the delivery. I'm trying to think of just someone. In Italy, who just does like that? Just, I don't know. I, don't, I can't think of even Grillo. Maybe, old school. maybe old school Grillo, because he really got he did that. Like before he got into politics, he's doing yeah. like, he, yeah, maybe he had a kind of American way of. Yeah, uh, yeah I think he was quite good. Evangelistic uh, yeah, approach yeah, yeah. to it. Yeah. Uh, but otherwise, nobody else. I like the Brits. The Brits are like. I was brilliant. watching Black Adder. I was binging on Black Adder <laughs> last night. <laughs> which which, uh, the, which season? Um, I started with the first World War One because I was listening to the Dan Carlin, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Dan Carlin podcast of it's uh, awesome, uh, what's it called? Apocalypse. Uh, blue, 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 bl
That's like the best one. It's like 20 hours on the First mm. World War, all the movements, all the reasons why. And mixed like together them. with like um, uh, letters from, you know, yeah, yeah. the soldiers and, and stuff. And with his voice. And with his if voice. If you guys don't know Dan Carlin, you, hardcore and, and history. you're into history, just check out Hardcore History because it's just like, that guy's voice is just amazing. Mm. Mm. And just like you can tell he's really passionate about it. Yeah. And... Um, so I've been, I got back, back into it because I was listening to the Celtics episodes yeah, and yeah, yeah. I wasn't really into it because I didn't, I didn't really like that time period. Mm -hmm. And I didn't like, like, I wasn't fascinated by the First World War when I was younger because mm. it just, the time period, you know, always, I didn't, yeah, it was kind they, of goofy. They don't really teach it to you that well. They don't cool. teach it that well, you know, about the trenches, you don't know about everything else, you don't know about the whole war, like in... Uh, in uh, the middle east and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and all that stuff but i mean i didn't like the actual aesthetic of the time period yeah yeah like okay. the planes like they, they look dorky and yeah you know the stuff with camel and all that bullshit i was like oh yeah i don't like i don't, don't like it but you know the name i know the name how do you know the name because of the fx models all oh, right yeah i used to we used to yeah, make yeah. them those were cool like to yeah, make yeah. them but i mean i didn't those like the fun. actual aesthetic but um, and then I started. I, I started listening to him, and then you know, he starts from the like from the beginning, right, with uh, yeah. Gabriello Princip and all that stuff, and like the the whole assassination, and then I just really got drawn into it. And then like the way he was, it was funny because I didn't like the aesthetic, but listening to the the story, yeah, you was, start getting interested in yeah. the aesthetic as well. And mm. you talk about you know hear about technology and like the guns and how they were romanticized, you know, in the beginning, and then just it was the flip. Like yeah. the thing that flipped the whole 20th machines. century, yeah, 20th, yeah. 20th century. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was really interesting. So going from that to the Celtics was kind of yeah, it was a step. Mm, yeah. Not yeah, as it was interesting. It was it was interesting from the from certain points of view, mm. like the whole fashion of like how the tartan yeah, yeah. pants uh, remained with everything. It was really cool. But again, just you guys got to listen to that stuff. Yeah, I think it's all really interesting. Every single one of them. Obviously, it depends on how interested you are in that. Mm. In that in the I think more than interesting, I should say compelling. It yeah. was more compelling for me. Mm -mm -mm. I was just like really fascinated by all, and then the actual accounts mm -hmm. of you know. Yeah, the, the story of um, the father, the guy from was it Pink Floyd or uh, Led, Led Zeppelin? I can't remember. It was the, the father of I think the singer from Led Zeppelin. He died in the war, in the First World War, and he and he wrote him a letter. Oh, wow. Uh, I think it's... I think, was it in the First World War or is it in the Second World War? Maybe Second. Probably Second World War. Mm. Anyway, it was something like that, that he wrote the letter to his son and then like it became a song, one of the Led Zeppelin songs. Oh, wow. Like Soldier's I Son or something like that. I didn't know that. Super, super powerful. It's like scary stuff. But it, it, in all those stories of the war, I think now it's it's been 100 years since the end yeah, of the war. This just year, the I other think. day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And... Um, we f so we sort of forget about it because we haven't been touched by war at all, mm. yeah. Yeah, not in that way, definitely. Not in that way, but I think just in, at all in general, yeah. yeah. Like it just hasn't, and um, like to to listen to it like that, you you realize why people make certain decisions afterwards mm. to like get away from that kind of thing. So a lot of like world history comes into perspective. Yeah, or like mm. the. Like um, the buffer zones. And all yeah, that. so you sort of you understand why Europe is the way it is, and, mm. and, and it's. I think it's super important to like to to know that kind of yeah, stuff. Just every now and then refresh your memory, yeah. and and if you have an opinion on anything, you should know where that where your opinion was formed mm. and why it was formed mm -hmm. that way, because everybody comes from what what's you know the people that were before us. So we need to know that kind of shit. Mm. Anyway, you ended up on Black Adder after this stuff. Yeah, so, so just you went like from bullets to. Like laughing. Because I remembered the last episode, which was, whoa. <laughs> I remember the last episode, which was uh, like really gut wrenching. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it went from really funny and just like kind of went down. Went over the top. So I, was, I think I was looking at a behind the scenes of how they did that. And the, the original footage is, is not that um, yeah, yeah, yeah. emotional at all. And they, they went through, you know, some guy slowed it down and then slowed it down even more and then slowed down the audio. And then someone else said, oh, "Why don't you put some um, some po uh, like a, a frame of poppies at the end?" And they went up to like a studio and they, "I have a still frame," and they put it on and they filmed it. So it was just interesting. And I was like, oh, "I remember it. this was really funny." So I just watched the whole yeah. uh, um, fourth season, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I went to the 
I went backwards. I went to the third and then to the second because, like, I don't like the first one. The first one, this was one just, is like campy. Yeah, it's really campy. I don't like, you know, it was just sort of really, I think really for bad. Me, the third one is the best. The third one is with the, um, Queen Elizabeth, Queen Victoria. No, I think it's Queen Elizabeth. Queen Elizabeth, yeah. yeah. But is that the first or the second one? I think it's the, that's the second. That's the second. Yeah. And then the third one is when he's with um, he's the butler. I don't remember. He's the butler to yeah. the to Hugh Laurie, yeah, yeah, yeah. who is the um, King George or Prince George or whatever. That, that's probably one of Hugh Laurie's greatest roles, which people. Well, and then he became Doctor House. They, yeah, like you know, Doctor House. Like most people know him for that. Mm. We know him for what he really did. He was. He was uh, <laughs> jo- yeah, he was George in yeah. the fourth. Uh, in the fourth one. I always have to thank the Parries. For getting into, into getting Black Adder. into Black Adder. They're, they're a friend of ours from, they're a family that were friends of ours in South Africa, that are friends of ours. And like the most, in, like proper, like English South Africans. English South Africans, like still flying the flag high. And uh, they got me into so much comedy. Mm. It's like, yeah, I, I wasn't exposed to it because we didn't really listen to it at home. Yeah. So one of the first ones I saw was the Eddie Izzard one. Yeah. One of the first stand-ups. It was a Chris Rock one, yeah, it is, and then it was an Eddie Izzard one. And he's 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 a good example of theatrical, yeah. but still stand-up comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, he's amazing. Like he could be a kind of a, you know reference for Italian Mm-mm-mm. stand-up comedy, but they I don't know they just don't have that um, yeah. delicate way of uh, sometimes really exaggerated and really yeah, like yeah. campy or whatever, and just like playing on words, punny. But I mean. Some a lot of it's very delicate, little you know stabbings at yeah, like yeah. your brain. You die by a thousand cuts in yeah. comedy. It's yeah. really cool, brilliant. Uh, and then I like Ricky Gervais. Oh, Gervais! Uh, what a hum- uh, humane. What's the one? Last human. one? Human. Human. Humane. Could be human. I don't know, but it, it's brilliant that uh, he doesn't like hunters at all. Mm-mm. But anyway, it doesn't matter. He'll come still around. Still funny. He's still He'll funny. Come around. He's, he's great. <laughs> But there's so many. And I was watching this Irish guy the other day. I can't remember his name, but I was wetting my pants. He was talking about how cows are, are assholes. <laughs> and that if we didn't eat cows, if we didn't eat cows, they'd just be all over the place because they wouldn't stop breeding and you'd just be bumping to cows the whole time. <laughs> and they would just be a nuisance and like we'd have to cull them off. <laughs> so, it's even worse. Basically what we're doing now. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's just, we're doing at it least, for a new At least this way we're, we're eating them and whereas otherwise we'd just be getting rid of them. It's like leaving them like they do with the kangaroos and in Australia. Australia. Yeah. Australia doesn't exist. Mm. You know that. Have you, have you, you haven't followed the flat earth thing at right. all. We said we were going to get into this and I said, I don't know if I'm going to have enough information yeah, to actually do a proper conversation. I, I think we're just going to skip into it with this I didn't Australia know, doesn't exist thing. They didn't know. I didn't know about that. They think that basically how the flat Earth think is that the flat the Earth is a disc on the um, like on a plane, and there's a sun that moves around on top and it illuminates different spaces, but they can't explain how Australia and Japan have light in the same time because it's impossible to do that with a torch on top of a of a map with a drawing, so they've decided that Australia is just a it doesn't exist, which is something that South Africans have always thought since the dawn of time, basically. And, <laughs> and, uh, until they get beaten in cricket and yeah, rugby. We're not getting beaten in cricket or rugby anymore. <laughs> no more. No more. There's New Zealand, though. Yeah, yeah but, New Zealand, but New Zealand apparently does exist for some reason. Ah, that, that makes all New the Zealand's sense. New Zealand's okay. The world. Australia isn't at the moment. And are they Australian flat earthers? I don't know. That is a really good question. They don't exist. <laughs> you have to ask. I have. That's a good question. That's a definite. I need to. Are there? They live in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> they must be, but they would just be um, government shills that uh, are part of the party line, and they just pretend to be Australians and flat earthers. So that they they would be the exception that proved the rule. Hmm. <laughs> that's a tough one. No, I had no idea about that. I mean, just like the whole, in general, the whole flat earth thing is really, it's funny, but it's actually pretty, pretty sad. I don't think there are many out there. It's just like people. There are, there are enough to be annoying. There's enough. To, or that one person yeah. is enough to be annoying. Yeah. But I mean, I don't know. I don't know. It's them, anti-vaxxers. 
all sorts. I think more than a government conspiracy to prove to keep the earth is round, flat earth and anti-vax is a government conspiracy to keep stupid people busy. <laughs> it's like here, guys. They probably have uh, the moon landings are pretty much done, and JFK is like you know, m- like most millennials don't even know that what he is. Yeah. So oh, flat earth. Here's flat earth. Here's a new Go one. For it. <laughs> it's take- much easier to do that. You know, it's much easier to prove, like, to, instead of saying, well, the earth is flat, but we're keeping that secret forever. It's much easier to just put, like, five CIA agents on YouTube and be like, dude, do you know the earth is flat? This is, this is how we proved it. We got, like, into the plane, and we've taken out a ruler, and we put the ruler against the horizon, and the horizon is flat. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Proven. Creepy. Proven. Done. Wow. Satellites. Australia doesn't exist. Pac-Man theory. Australia doesn't exist. That's, pa- a, that's a crazy the one. The Pac-Man theory is even worse. If you fly straight from one direction to another, okay, you end up in the same spot, right? You, it's a teleportation, basically. It's a Pac-Man. You know when you go yeah, out when you the go screen down, in yeah. Pac-Man, you come out the other side? Mind blown. Wow. Completely. And can you go under the earth, the flat disk? I don't know. No, you can't because the flat disc is like uh, it's on giant shoulders or something like that. They, they don't know. Jelly. <laughs> well, there's like way too many questions. They're, yeah, but they have answers. They have answers. You just got to go down. Yeah, well, there. no, Australia is not an answer. They, they, they just have to go. You just got to go through that rabbit hole. Go I down. haven't met someone. I've met anti-vaxxers. Mm. And uh, like the actual, I can maybe give them more the benefit yeah, yeah, of the doubt yeah, you know right. you can say okay yeah well whatever okay whatever i can i can i can give it to you you know you never know yeah you never know but the flat earth thing is uh really really weird i know i i can't i don't get it but it, it's like they, they believe it and of course with anything like that is that you can't disprove them because as soon as you come with real proof which you know, the only way to prove it to them is to like shift, like send them to space and bring them back. Well, you don't have to bring them back. You do because they have, but <laughs> you bring one back. You, you bring one back. <laughs> but if you bring it back, then when he tells everybody that the earth is actually round, then he's just been indoctrinated while mm-hmm. he was like in the secret facility. Mm-hmm. So you have to put them all in the spaceship and send them all up. All 16 of them. All together. There's so many more than 16. So many more. But, anyway. but that's probably like the government is also like <laughs> the, government. the government, the man. It's probably they're like, okay, give them this theory, give them this other theory. And then every now and then just give them like some free Netflix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like one month. Uh, well, no, it's, and it's like, oh, well, I'll give you one month nice. if you like sign up now. And then like they're going to be like the dumb people. YouTube, like, YouTube is CIA anyway. It was invented by them, I'm sure, to control us. Probably. They're probably listening to us right now. Oh, but of course they are. They're just like, boom. This, like, this is a way we can control them. We put all the information in one place. How to set up your camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You believe that. Go for it. And then just like let them run free. They can't do any damage online. Well, we've mentioned <laughs> Flat Earth, ISIS and the CIA, and yeah. Dolgen Gabaneng. Fantastic. China in share, one. Share, 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 share. <laughs> <laughs> Just have us get onto some like wacky website. I know we just have. We need to say something terrible about women or something. No, it's, uh, there's because. nothing. There's nothing terrible to say about women. It's they're all amazing and they smell of flowers. Exactly. <laughs> Their shit smells like flowers. <laughs> would <Fantastic>. be the. <laughs> no, we don't even get into that. No, no, no but yeah, that would be one way to notoriety. Yeah, if you just start insulting everyone, it's just like. <sighs> So we, it'll, it'll be so easy. It'll be a shorter lived. It'll be so uh, easy. It'll be shorter lived, but it'll be like very intense. Very intense. <laughs> <laughs> we could, we could just get a list of people to insult. Yeah, but it has to get to them. Yeah. We should get the journalists from the Dolce Gabbana. Oh no, thing. we should we should shit on the journalists from Dolce Gabbana. Maybe we should write it about us. You have to write them a, pri- a private message. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. they're not. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how many private messages. It was a he or a she. She. I can't she. remember her name, but it was I think a she. Just imagine how many like DMs she automatically got after that. Yeah, like millions. Or like a whole lot of dick pics or something. Like she got something. Mm, massive. 
I don't know, but it's it's pretty funny. Like you, you just you from Dolce and Gabbana's point of view, you shouldn't even do a private message like that. Like not yeah, even. Yeah, of course not. Don't put a. a not even write but a letter. He, he can't help himself. He he keeps writing comments on like you know, Ferrani's thing or oh, because they also had some beef or something. Yeah, he's got beef with everybody. He's like just all the time. He he just a shit stirrer. Yeah, it's definitely he's, interesting though. Yeah, yeah. He just he's just causing shit. I think he just does it for fun. Not he's like 80, 80 something. Though. No, he's not that old. He's a younger. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Not eighty. Not quite seventy. I don't think he's like sixty. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sixty something. Google it. Google it. Google it. But, uh, yeah. Boo. I don't know. They just fucked up big time, man. <laughs> it's going to be funny. Dolce Gabbana. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. the hour, dude. Really? Yep. Wow. Time flew for us. How do you go for <laughs> you guys? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> right. So I'd say that's, uh, we call it quits for tonight. Yeah, for sure. And uh, hopefully next week we're going to be here with uh, somebody new. Yeah, definitely. Um, we have options, but uh, we'll see who's yeah, going to be Like today room. was supposed to be a guest uh, episode, but um, yeah, yeah. last minute changes. But uh, okay. we'll see. We'll see when we'll we, see. Get to do, we get to do it again. Yeah, yeah. It's always fun. Cool, cool. man. Bye, everybody. Cheers.